Let's talk about osmosis and transpiration. In my last class, I explained that what are the content of this chapter, which is under the transport in organism. I explained about diffusion and imbibition a little bit. In this video, I'm going to explain about osmosis and transpiration. If you can remember what is the definition of diffusion, then you can think that diffusion is spreading the particles from the region of higher concentration to the region of lower concentration. But in case of osmosis, what's going on? In osmosis, suppose this is a selectively permeable membrane. This is very important. If two solutions are being separated by a selectively permeable membrane with the same, with the same solvent and same solute, then you know that there will be the differences between the concentrations level in two solutions. So I hope you know that the solution means solution means there will be solvent and solute. The solvent is that I mean think about that I'm mixing sugar with water then the water tastes sweet that means is the mixture or the solutions so the solutions becoming become with water and sugar so the water would be the solvent water would be the solvent and this is sugar which is solute so when two different concentrations that means think about there is 200 ml water and again this is 200 ml water but here uh, 5 gram sugar and here 50 gram sugar has been mixed. So we know that both solutions are made up of the similar solute and solvent but the concentration level are different. So when these two type, when two solutions having different concentration will be separated by a selectively permeable membrane then something will happen. I mean, after some time, the concentration level will be equal because the solvent will f flow from the region of lower concentration to the region of higher concentration. That is the main thing. So, this is the lower concentration and this is the higher concentration. So, the solvent will flow from this concentration to that concentration. So, this is lower and this is higher. What we know that from the diffusion that it diffused from the region of higher concentration to the lower concentration but in case of osmosis it will be from the region of lower concentration to the higher concentration and solvent will flow. So what you can say in case of osmosis when two when the similar solutions having different concentrations are being separated through a semi-permeable membrane or selectively permeable membrane then the solvent will flow from the lower concentration level to the higher concentration level and this is osmosis based on that we can differentiate osmosis into two types that is number one endosmosis number two i mean if we could say the types of osmosis is endos endosmosis and number two is exosmosis. So the endosmosis means the absorption of water. I mean, uh, think about uh, grabs. If we dehydrate gaps, then it will become shrinked. But when it will again hydrate it, then think about the ping pong balls when it is actually soaked with water, it becomes like that. So this is endosmosis because water is going inside to the ping pong balls and it's getting bigger. So this is endosmosis. And the exosmosis becomes like, uh, think about graphs when it is getting dehydrated through the sunlight, it becoming shrinked because the solvent is going out from inside and this is known as exosmosis. So the exhaust means going outside and endos means inside. So we can differentiate two types of osmosis and based on this membrane it can be three types. I mean number one is permeable membrane, number two is semi-permeable membrane and number three is impermeable membrane or non-permeable membrane. 
So that means, based on the permeability, we can say that membrane can be three types. It is, this is called selectively permeable because it allows uh, uh, the flow of selective solvents. That is why this is important and beautiful. So the osmosis is simply the flow of solvent from the lower concentration to the higher concentration. I hope you understand. Now think about the transpiration. And I'm explaining it because this is under the chapter of transporting organism and you studied about diffusion, you studied about imbibition, you know, study about uh, uh, the osmosis and now we need to think about transpiration. The word transpiration means it is a physiological process by which, by which water is carried through the leaf and after using it, it will be it will be erased it will be actually released through the aerial part of the plants so it will be evaporated i mean uh, we can say that transpiration is the physiological process by which water will be out from the body of plants it like vapor in in in, in form of vapor from the aerial part of plants so this is transpiration in this case transpiration is three types. Number one, we can say this is stomatal, stomatal transpiration, stomatal transpiration, and number two is cuticular transpiration, cuticular transpiration, and number three is lenti lenticular transpiration. So we know that through the process of osmosis and uh, through the process of diffusions, I mean, this process is going on inside plants. So plants absorb water through the root hair from the capillaries, capillary water from the soil, and then it goes to the leaf for the photosynthesis. When some amount of water is being used in this process, some amount of water is not used, and that water is I mean, it's getting out from the plants uh, in the form of vapor from the aerial part of the plants and this is known as transpiration. So we know that stomata means uh, there are some pores guided by two guard cells and I'm explaining it because it's, uh, it's very uh, explanatory. We need to know uh, when we'll study about HSC biology. Uh, plant physiology on that case the absorption of mineral salts has been discussed in a wider way and also the structure of stomach is also discussed in this uh, playlist I will not explain the stomata uh, structure but later on I'll definitely upload so the stomata is like this so it's actually guarded it's actually guarded by uh, combined of two guard cells and there are some plant cells uh, between uh, these. So this is stomata and this uh, space is known as stomata which is a pores actually based in, in the leaf, in the mesophyll tissues. So through the stomatal transpiration mostly 95% transpiration is occurring. And the cuticular transpiration means um, Especially uh, in the epithelium, I mean uh, epidermis of the leaf, especially in upper and lower leaf, uh, lower surface of the leaf, there is a, a layer which is made up of cutin and this is known as cuticle. And through this cuticle, some sort of evaporation is going on and this is called cuticular transpiration. So through the cuticle, which is uh, a layer uh, which is made up of Cutin in the epidermis layer of leaf in upper and lower surface. This is cuticular transpiration, and mostly two to three percent transpiration is going on. Number three is lenticular transpiration. This is actually um, when there's uh, like a rupture bark. Uh, the body of the plants, in case of secondary growth, there are some aggressions. Uh, is created in the bark when that is getting ruptured and then some pores is created and that pores is known as lenticel. This pores is known as lenti 
cell. So this is actually the rupture, actually the rupture bark and it is actually created when there is a secondary growth is going on. So in case of secondary growing, there are some aggressions in the bark and that's getting ruptured and then there are some pores is being created and this is uh, the place where some amount of uh, water is being evaporated and this is lenticular transpiration. So those transpiration which is going on through the stomata is known as stomata transpiration. The transpirations which is going on through the cuticle it's known as cuticular and the transpiration which is going on through the lenticel this is known as lenticular transpiration and mostly 2 to 3 percent again is going on so altogether you can see maximum transpiration is going on through the stomatal transpiration now most importantly we need to think about that what are the factors that is affecting transpiration and we can think this is uh, two types of two types of uh, transpiration which is actually affecting and that is number one internal 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 factors of transpiration and this is number one you can see that in case of uh, sorry we can think about first external and then uh, we can uh, think about internal so the external factors are think about temperature temperature so uh, the transpiration is affected by temperature when there is more temperature then uh, the evaporations of uh, water is uh, increased so when temperature increased the transpiration also increased second external factor is uh, relative humidity this is very important relative humidity so what is relative humidity this is actually the ratio of uh, ratio of air air vapor uh, or air vapor in uh, in the air or water vapor actually water vapor in the air in an atmosphere and the uh, water vapor that can be hold by the air in that atmosphere in a given temperature so if we say the relative humidity is a ratio suppose the ratio of what the amount of water vapor that is present in the air in an atmosphere on that given temperature and the amount of water vapor that can be hold by that air on that atmosphere so when relative humidity is higher that means the transpiration will get lower and when the relative humidity is lower then transpiration will get higher because when there is low relative humidity so the the holding power of water vapor in air will increase so when there is low relative humidity so you can think that air will we can hold more water vapor so the transpiration is is increased so more transpiration means more water vapor is released from the plants so the air can hold it but if the relative humidity is high then you can think that there is no power of the uh, atmosphere to hold the amount of water vapor that is why it is inversely proportional so the relative humidity when it increased transpiration decreased in case of relative humidity decrease transpiration increased because we understand the concept Number three is, is actually wind. In this case, a wind, um, when there is more wind, it actually change the, the uh, water vapor present in the, in the air on that time. So when there is more wind, so changes happens in the atmosphere, so the transpiration is also going on. And fourth is sunlight. Sunlight, it means when there is light, so uh, so more metabolisms and more photosynthesis will be there so more transpiration will take place so in case of sunlight if it is higher then definitely the transpiration will higher so in case of temperature you can say if it is goes up transpiration goes up in case of relative humidity if it is goes up then transpiration will go down in this wind if it is goes up transpiration will goes up in case of sunlight it's similar 
So in case of internal factors, I mean, it is definitely uh, important in case of the surface air, yeah, the surface of the leaf. If there is more surface, that's the more probability of having more stomata. So if uh, there is more space in the aerial part of the plants, then transpiration will increase. If there is um, the age and the structure, uh, and the numbers of stomata is also important. So when we'll study about the factors which is affecting transpiration, something must be considered. The, the external and the internal factors. Usually the external factors is important. In your question paper you might see these questions in case of the relations between these factors, temperature, uh, relative humidity and then wind and the sunlight. So I hope when you will study try to understand the concept clearly. I may have some mistakes when I have explaining things. If you find any mistakes in the entire lecture of any uh, of my videos do let me know and I want when you study you feel it you try to visualize it and it will be much more happier when you understand things I personally feel that when I understand something it gives me much pleasure and I feel it same for you also so I hope in this video I shortly explain about osmosis and transpiration you must remember the definition of osmosis the process of it and the types exosmosis endosmosis you must remember one thing that protoplasm is known as the physical basis of life and also water is known as fluid of life you must remember about the the definition of diffusions osmosis and what are the factors which is affecting diffusions? You must understand uh, the transpiration, definition, types and the factors which is affecting it. So study perfectly and let me know that what else I can do for that and I'm regularly updating my lectures for you and those who are watching these tutorials from any corner of the world. I'm really grateful to you that you are watching my tutorials and let me know your feedback. I shall be so much grateful. So take care. See you in the next class. I'm coming up with the process of absorption of water and mineral salts. Take care. Bye.